All right, we're going to look at um, the items from the latest ATN test part two so that you can do your revision. So let's start with number one. We're going to go relatively quickly because there's eight items and in fact there's actually 20 items in all if you include all the parts to the different problems. So um, if you need to stop the, the video and um, work periodically from one problem to another, that's completely fine. So let's look at number one. We have a series of fractions and then number zero uh, in a row, and we need to list them in order from least to greatest. So we have two-fifths, zero, negative three-halves. That's um, negative three-halves is negative three over two, and negative nine-eighths, or negative nine over eight, and eight-sevenths. And that would be a positive fraction. So we know that we're going to start with the two negatives because they are um, both negative and the others are positive. So we know negatives are below zero. So we're going to start with those. Now, it's a common error to think that negative nine eighths is less than negative three halves because nine negative nine is less than negative three. But if we look at what the actual fraction is, negative three halves is negative one and a half, and negative nine eighths is just a little bit less than negative one. So let's start with negative three halves, and then the only number we have left that's negative is negative nine eighths, and then we have zero. Then the numbers after that that we're left with is two fifths and eight sevenths, and we know that eight sevenths is more than one, so two fifths is the next one, and then eight sevenths. So that's the answer to number one. Let's look at number two. You can stop and pause this now if you want to review number one. Okay, here's number two. Um, this is just, um, oops, we need to go to the next one here, sorry. Here we go. Um, number two is just number two, A and two B. And we have 30 minus negative 17. So if we know that when we subtract a negative, that's going to be um, like adding. This, if it said 30 minus 17, we could just consider that a normal subtraction problem and the answer would be 13. But 30 minus negative 17 is subtracting a negative, which is the same thing as adding a positive. So that answer is 47 because 30 plus 17 is 47. Now 2b says negative 17 minus negative 30. So again, we are subtracting a negative, which is the same thing as adding a positive, but this time we're starting at 17 below zero. We're starting at negative 17. So we have to go up 30 from negative 17, which will take us past 30 to the answer, which is positive 13. That's a positive 13. Some, um, mis some answers that were marked wrong on the test showed it as negative 13. It had to be positive. Okay, looking at the next one, um, we've got 2c, which is 3 fourths plus negative 1 half. There were a number of uh, incorrect answers on this one. Uh, many of you got it right. But one of the um, things that I think people forgot is that this is an addition problem with fractions, so we have to find common denominators. So if we look at this as 3 fourths plus negative 2 fourths, because 1 half is the same thing as 2 fourths. Now we're adding a negative, which is the same thing as subtracting. So if we think of it as 3 minus 2 equals 1, and 4 the fourth always stays the same. The denominator stays the same when we subtract uh, or add. We end up with positive one-fourth. Because we're starting at positive three-fourths, we're subtracting two-fourths, and we're we get one-fourth as a result. Okay, let's look at the one underneath that. I made a little number line here to get us started here. Um, there were a number of errors on this one. 1 1.5 minus 2.7. So if we look at 0 being in the middle here, 
and let's uh, say that this is 1 and this is 2. And here we have 1.5, our starting point between 1 and 2. That's not perfect, but it's roughly in between. And um, if we want to make some humps to show the direction, we are subtracting. So we're going to subtract 1. There's 1, right? And it's negative 2.7, so we're going to subtract another. Let's add some hash marks here. Let's make a negative 1 there and a negative 2 here. So we've gone 1, we've gone, that's negative 1, we've gone negative 2 now. And we're not going to go negative 3, but we're going to go almost negative 3 to negative 2.7. So from here we have to go 0.7. So that's going to go from here just a little bit past, right? Here's, here's 1 half right there. And, uh, and we're going a little bit past that to 0.7. So from 0.5 to 0.7. So we end up with negative 1.7. Two. Negative 1.2 is our answer for 2D. Okay, let's look at um, the next one. Let's look at, I can't remember what number this one was. Let me write it down. Uh, this, if that was uh, number 2, then this would be number 3. Let's call this number 3. Oops. 3. <laughs> Okay, and this is an order of operations problem. Um, the the uh, Jamboard didn't delete one of my earlier errors, so it is deleted on my iPad, but it's not deleted on my computer screen. So this is 10 right here, <laughs> just so you know. 10 plus 9 times negative 6 minus negative 1 plus 8. Using the order of operations, Parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division left to right, and addition and subtraction left to right. We have only one uh, area that is in the parentheses that we need to do, and that's over here. I've been asked about that negative 6. It's in parentheses also, but there's nothing to be done in there. There's no operation. It just says negative 6. So we're going to leave that there because there's nothing to do there. But inside these parentheses, there's a one, a negative one plus eight. So let's rewrite the whole problem. 10 plus nine times negative six minus seven, because negative one plus eight is positive seven. And that subtraction sign just comes down from the original problem there. Okay, now we have multiplication to deal with. Nine times negative six is negative 54. So now we have 10 plus negative 54 minus 7. Now all we have left is addition and subtraction left to right. So 10 plus negative 54 is negative 44 minus 7. Negative 44 minus 7 is negative 51. And that's the answer to number 3. Let's look at number 4a and number 4b. So um, again, sorry for the messiness. Um, the Jamboard didn't record my deleted initial uh, parentheses, so they're a little messy. But what that says is 13 times negative 7. And um, it's a positive times a negative, so we know our answer is going to be negative when you have different signs and two factors, the product will be negative, um, and the signs are different here. So 7 times 10 is 70, and 7 times 3 is 21. So 7 times 13 is 70 plus 21, which would be 91, and since one of them is negative, that means it's going to be a negative 91. All right, let's just write that down. 7 times 10 equals 70. 7 times 3 equals 21. And we know that this is negative, so we'll call that negative. That's negative, and that's negative. So negative 70, negative 21. Give us negative 91. Okay, uh, a little hard to see there, but I think you get the idea. 
for b, negative 8 times negative 20. Now we have a negative number times another negative number, and that means our answer is going to be positive. So 8 times 20, we know that 8 times 2 is 16, and so if we incorporate the 10 in there, that means it's 160. And since negative 8 is being multiplied by negative 20, the answer is positive. So we're going to leave it as 160. All right, the next one, 4c and 4d. 99 divided by negative 3. It's um, uh, funny how many people got this one wrong. I think many of you would um, shake your head at yourselves. Uh, this is one of those problems that's kind of designed to um, play with your brain a little bit and confuse you. Um, 99 divided by 3 is 33. There were a number of answers that said 30. There were some answers that mul tried to multiply it and said 298. But this is just 99 divided by 3, and one of the pr one of the um, numbers being divided is negative, so that means our answer is going to be negative. So we had an answer of negative 33. Some folks had the answer negative 3 listed as well, um, which was not, not correct. Down here, for D, the, uh, we have a negative 36 over negative 12. That's actually a division problem negative 36 divided by negative 12. So let's write it, write it like that, negative 36 divided by negative 12. Sometimes writing it as a division problem um, makes it easier to visualize for some people. Any fraction can be written as a division problem. And in this case, we have a negative divided by a negative, so the answer is positive. And there are three 12s in 36, so the answer is just 3, positive 3. And the answer up here was negative 33, so I'm going to circle that. Okay, we're getting there, almost done. Um, 4e and 4f is negative 3.6 divided by 1.8. Once again, I um, watched some people working on the test set this up as a long division problem. Bring that over there, bring that over there. Um, and which is interesting to me because now that's correct to move those decimal points and we can also visualize this as 36 divided by 18 and we know that there are two 18s in 36 so 36 divided by 18 equals 2 and since one of them is negative that means the answer is negative 2 let me write that over here negative 2 and circle it that's the answer okay for f this was simpler than some folks realized when we multiply fractions, we use the same rules if one of them happens to be negative. Multiply it straight across. 1 times negative 5 equals negative 5. 3 times 7 equals 21. And that's our answer. That's all we had to do. Negative 5 over 21. All right. Stop and rewatch any of these if you need to. The next one. We're at number 5 now. Um, I'm not going to rewrite the whole paragraph that made up this problem, but we had Lydia going to the movies with four friends. That's five people in all, and she's going to pay for everybody. So we need to find out how much it's going to cost. And five fifty per ticket for five people, that's five times five dollars and fifty cents plus three twenty-five for five people. That's five times three twenty-five. That would be the expanded um, format, and we want to also show the factored format. And so let's take 5 then, multiply it by 550 plus 325. And if we simplify both of those, we end up with an answer that is uh, $43 and 75 cents. So on the test, I was looking for this answer and these two formats um, of the expression or equation. And um, some of you did a sort of longer version of the expanded format, but um, I counted it anyway. I was pretty lenient. As long as you showed two different ways and one of them represented in one way or another, um, the expanded version and another one represented the factored version. I was perfectly happy with that. 
Okay, so $43.75 also needed to be in your answer. I did give partial credit for um, some of these. Okay, last, uh, not last one, but uh, we're getting there anyway. <laughs> so these are all greater than, less than, or equal to. <laughs> Looks like, again, that um, Jamboard did not delete the initial awful circles that I drew and replaced with better circles. So sorry for that. Um, but let's uh, look at these. And 11 plus negative 20 is greater than or less than negative 20 plus 11. And you don't even have to do any calculations to determine, to determine the answer to this one. Because 11 plus negative 20 and negative 20 plus 11 are the same thing. The commutative property of addition determines that it doesn't matter which number starts first. If you add the two numbers together, you're going to get the same answer. So these are equal to each other. 6b, which on the test was across from 6a, is also the same numbers, but this is subtraction, and there's no commutative property of subtraction. When we start with 12 and subtract a negative 10, we end up with 22. If we start with negative 10 and subtract 12, we end up with negative 22. So 22 is greater than negative 22. Multiplication, the commutative property applies again, so we know these are the same. Negative 5 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times negative 5. Those are equal. Again, these were across from each other on the test. So on the test, the two problems on the left were both equal to each other. The two problems on the right were both greater than, because in this case we have negative 16 divided by negative 4. So that would be negative 16 divided by negative 4 is a negative divided by a positive, and that makes for a positive 4. Whereas negative 4 divided by negative 16 makes a positive 1 fourth. So again, we have greater than as our answer here. That one was a little tricky and fooled a few folks. Okay, sorry about the, the messy um, Jamboard once again. All right, moving on to the next one. Looks like this one did a little bit of the same thing. Um, interesting how when I work on the iPad and make corrections, it doesn't correct on the actual Jamboard on the computer. So this is number eight. This was the last one on the test. Um, what was the last one we did? Last one was 6A60. I'm not sure what happened to number seven. <laughs> did I skip it? Do I have number seven over here? No. All right. We'll look at number seven after we do number eight. Actually, let's just do number seven here. Seven. And um, let's see if I can find number seven on the test here. Uh, that's not it. There it is. Uh, number seven was um, graph X is less than or equal to 2. So go back to the Jamboard and let's go to the next screen. x is less than or equal to negative 2 on a number line, uh, positive 2 rather, right? That's really important. There's, there were a number of folks that this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. We'll call this negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Um, there are a number of people who actually put their dot on negative 2, but the dot needed to be on positive 2. And in this case, it's less than or equal to, so it was a closed dot, and it's less than or equal to, so we shade less than into the left direction. All you have to do is darken that number line. You didn't need to shade it any more than that. So if that's what your answer looked like, um, you got it right. If you shaded in the other direction, you got it wrong, or if you put an open dot, it was wrong. Okay, let's go back to number eight, and there we go. Okay, uh, again, sorry it's really messy. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and write it again. 24 minus 2 to the third power divided by 8 plus 42 divided by 7 plus 9 divided by 3 plus 10. That was the whole problem right there. And um, once again, we are using parentheses first, exponents, and then multiplication and division left to right, and addition and subtraction left to right. 
So in this case, we have both parentheses and exponents to work with. And um, so let's start with the parentheses on the left side, 24 divided by two, excuse me, 24 minus two to the third power. There's an exponent inside the parentheses, so let's get take care of that. So we have 24 minus eight, two to the third power is eight divided by eight plus 42 divided by seven plus nine divided by three plus 10. So I did one step and then I moved on. Now I'm gonna do um, some more steps at once here. So 24 minus eight equals 16. So we have 16 divided by eight now plus, and let's do everything inside the parentheses here. So 42 divided by seven is six plus nine divided by three is three plus 10. Now we have only division left over here and the rest of the problem to do. 16 divided by eight is two plus six plus three plus 10. And that gives us two plus six is eight plus three is 11 is 11 plus 10 is 21. And that was our answer. So there it is. That's all of the main items on the test. If you have specific questions about the bonus problems, I can help you with those at another time. But uh, thank you for watching and um, good luck with your revisions.